Good morning and welcome to St. Luke's on this uh, Father's Day. You're so welcome this morning, especially fathers who are watching at home, and uh, I pray that you're with your families and uh, enjoying this wonderful celebration of being fathers to your families. So thank you so much for everything that you do. We hope you enjoy this service, and we pray that God is with you this morning. Let's quieten our hearts as we come into God's presence. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation, and so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him. Let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. So let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is Christ is made the sure foundation. Open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. 
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Our first lesson is from the Old Testament, Genesis. The child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast on the day that Isaac was weaned. But Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, playing with her son Isaac. So she said to Abraham, cast out this slave woman with her son, for the son of this slave woman shall not inherit along with my son Isaac. The matter was very distressing to Abraham on account of his son. But God said to Abraham, Do not be distressed because of the boy and because of your slave woman. Whatever Sarah says to you, do as she tells you. For it is through Isaac that offspring shall be named for you. As for the son of the slave woman, I will make a nation of him also, because he is your offspring. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder along with the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered about in the wilderness of Beersheba. When the water in the skin was gone, she cast the child under one of the bushes. Then she went and sat down opposite him a good way off, about the distance of a bow shot. For she said, Do not let me look on the death of the child. And as she sat opposite him, she lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the boy, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What troubles you, Hagar? Do not be afraid, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Come, lift up the boy and hold him fast with your hand, for I will make a great nation of him. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. She went and filled the skin with water, and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy, and he grew up. He lived in the wilderness and became an expert with the bow. He lived in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother got a wife for him from the land of Egypt. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 86. Bow down your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and in misery. Keep watch over my life, for I am faithful. Save your servant who puts his trust in you. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for you are my God. I call upon you all the day long. Gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, and great is your love to all those who call upon you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer, and attend the voice of my supplications. In the time of my trouble I will call upon you, for you will answer me. Among the gods there is none like you, O Lord, 
nor anything like your works. All nations you have made will come and worship you, O Lord, and glorify your name. For you are great, you do wondrous things, and you alone are God. Turn to me and have mercy upon me. Give your strength to your servant and save the child of your handmaid. Show me a sign of your favor so that those who hate me may see it and be ashamed. Because, O Lord, you have helped me and comforted me. Our second reading, the epistle, is from Romans. Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that Just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But we, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel anthem is, This is my Father's World. my father's world and to my listening ears all nature sings and round me rings the music of the spheres this is my father's world I rest in the thought of rocks and trees Yeah. 
The Holy Gospel of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to the twelve disciples, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher, and the slave like the master. If they have been called the master of the house of Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others I also will acknowledge before my heart Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever, whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake, will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Sometimes life doesn't make sense. And it's only later when we see the full picture that we truly understand what's happening in our lives. We truly understand. As believers in God, it's faith that gets us through tough times. Faith is the confidence of things to hope for and for, sure, and for assurance of things not seen. Today on Father's Day, we are looking at Abraham, the patriarch of the faith. Abraham was 75 years old when he first received God's call and the promise that God will bless him and make him into a great nation. Then Abraham and his wife Sarah had to wait another 25 years before their son Isaac was born, by which time Abraham was 100 years old. After this long period of waiting while Isaac was born, there was much joy and much celebration. I wonder if you can imagine the pain and confusion when God some years later said to Abraham, Take this son, take your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain that I will show you. Well, this passage of Scripture has been wrestled over for centuries by Jewish Christian theologians looking for answers. It's provoked anguish and a lot of commentary. Bob Dylan and Leonard Cohen have, been, have both composed songs about it in their careers as well. As a parent, I would do everything in my power to protect my children from harm. So why doesn't Abraham turn round to God and say, No, God, this is something I just won't do. I won't sacrifice my son. This passage raises a lot of uncomfortable questions which cannot easily be answered. But because we find this story disturbing, 
doesn't mean that we can simply dismiss it. In fact, the more we look into it, the more it has to teach us, even if it does leave some unanswered questions. You see, God was putting Abraham's faithfulness and his loyalty to the test. It is one thing to say you love God above all else, but do you really? Do you really love God above all else? This test in particular was contrary both to human reason and to divine promise. I wonder, why didn't Abraham simply refuse to go through with this test? Why didn't he just say to God, I'm not prepared to do this, I just won't do this? Well, I think it was because over the years, Abraham had learned through many tough lessons about the importance of obeying God. And he had learned that even if God's calling made no sense, God could be trusted. God could be trusted through everything. And it was because he trusted God that he was able to obey him in this way. Obedience to God can be a struggle. It can be a real struggle. Putting aside our will and submitting to God's will is one of the hardest lessons we need to learn. Obedience can only come once we've learned to trust God. The clue that Abraham trusted that God would somehow intervene can be seen in the fact that he says to his servants, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we, meaning the boy and I, will come back to you. And when Isaac asks his father about the lack of sacrifice, Abraham responds, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering. As Abraham made this heart-wrenching journey of obedience, he would have remembered the promises God had given him to bless him and the times when God had seen him through his difficulties. From personal experience, Abraham knew that even when God made no sense, he can be trusted. When our journey is tough, when our journey is tough and God feels distant, or when we are being called to do something that scares us, something that takes us out of our comfort zone, it's good to remember the promise God has given us in the past, both in Scripture and personally. This helps us to remind us that God is faithful and will not fail us. At all times and in all circumstances, we are called to trust in the Lord with all our hearts. So I have a question today. Where does God come in our life? Where does God come in your life? How much would we be prepared to sacrifice for the sake of God? You see, God wants our total love and our service and our devotion. Now we've considered Abraham's response. What about Isaac? I wonder what he was feeling under all this pressure and this situation. I'm left wondering why when it became clear that he was to be the intended sacrifice, he didn't struggle against his father or call for help. Abraham was an old man, and surely it wouldn't have taken much for Isaac to escape his father's grasp and flee away and just run. Could it be that Isaac submitted to all that was taking place? And if so, why? As I thought about Isaac carrying wood along Beside his father, asking questions as they walked along on this trek, and then apparently trusting his father as he bound him up and laid him on the wood. I remembered moments when my own children trusted me completely, when they gave me all their trust. Once when we were flying on a plane in New Zealand, we were hit by some really, really serious turbulence. It was so severe that everything flew up to the top of the cabin. 
the plane went like this. It was almost like it hit a wall and dived a thousand feet, then went back up again and hit another wall and then went down again. It was really, really, really frightening. My frightened son, Joel, looked into my eyes. He was young, he was small, and he asked, Dad, are we going to be okay? And I calmly said to him, Yes, son, we're going to be okay. Even though everything inside of me wondered if this plane was on its way to a crash landing, I was really, really worried, and I've never prayed so hard in my life. When I showed my son, he relaxed, and his eyes were filled with trust. I can still see that right now. He didn't understand, but he trusted me. To truly understand the significance of this story of Abraham's willingness to sacrifice his only son Isaac, we need to fast forward time to the New Testament, where we see striking similarities between the story of Abraham and Isaac and the story of Jesus. Isaac is called your only son whom you love. At Jesus' baptism, a voice from heaven declares, This is my beloved son. Jesus is God's only beloved son. As Isaac carried the wood for the burnt offering, so Jesus carried his cross to the place of execution. With the provision of a ram as a substitute for Isaac, Abraham renames Mount Moriah Jehovah Jireh. The Lord will provide. And indeed, God provided the ultimate sacrifice in Jesus Christ. It is Jesus' death on the cross that ultimately enables us to make sense of the story of Abraham and Isaac. It was out of his love for us that God the Father sent his son Jesus into the world. And why Jesus was willing to submit to death on the cross. Well, the story of Abraham and Isaac disturbs us, but it also foretells of a much bigger sacrifice that God makes for us. God does not require Abraham to actually sacrifice his son. However, God allows the sacrifice of Jesus, his only son, through which the power of sin and death was broken, and our relationship with God is restored, restored fully. When we view this disturbing story of Abraham's willingness to sacrifice Isaac from the perspective of Jesus' sacrifice, then it all makes much more sense. However, Abraham, the patriarch of our faith, did not have a copy of the New Testament so that he could read ahead and see how something so traumatic could ultimately be used for God's greater good. Even without knowing the details of the end of the story, Abraham trusted God and was faithful and obedient. Today, in our lives, today in our lives, we may be on a heart-wrenching journey. We may be struggling to trust God and to live with obedience. So it's good to be reminded that the story of Abraham and Isaac is fundamentally a story about faithfulness, obedience, and love, as shown by Abraham to God, and most importantly, that God shows to us. As God provides us with a Savior in Jesus, so he continues to provide for us. As Paul writes in Romans, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? In our own family, and in our ministry to the thousands of people we have had the privilege to serve, there are challenging times. Like our story with Abraham and Isaac, Life sometimes does not 
make sense until we view it from the perspective of Jesus. Inside our wedding band, Cher and I have engraved Romans 8, 28. And this is a promise that when we turn, this is a promise that we turn to repeatedly in our lives. It says, all things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. No matter what happens on our journey, we have faith in God and are obedient to him. We can trust him to work everything out for his ultimate good and ours also. Until we see things from Jesus' perspective, life may not always make sense. We don't have all the answers right now. But when we have faith and are obedient to God, we can be certain that God is good, that God is faithful, and most of all, that God can be trusted. God can be trusted. So journey on in your lives. Persevere. Journey on in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon the earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. And I collect for today. O Lord, make us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name. For you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen and our collect for Sundays. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance 
of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And a prayer in times of conflict. O oh God, you have bound us together in a common life. Help us in the midst of our struggles for justice and truth to confront one another without hatred or bitterness and to work together with mutual forbearance and respect. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The prayers of the people on this third Sunday after Pentecost. In Christ, God reveals to us steadfast love and invites us into mercy. With grateful hearts, let us respond in prayer, saying, O oh, gracious God, hear our prayer. That we and all men and women of faith, and especially the leaders of the church, Michael, Mary, Charles, and Katie may know when propriety, uh, propriety and order are overruled by the Spirit and may see the outcast and the ig insignificant as tr the true bearers of the word. O oh, gracious God, hear our prayer. For the capacity to endure the lashes of God's ruthless love and for the patience to be conformed to the pattern of Christ's suffering, that we may know and proclaim the power of the resurrection. O oh, gracious God, hear our prayer. For the world's people in their brokenness and suffering, and for those who make peace and do justice, that they may be strong and courageous in the face of discouragement and opposition. O oh, gracious God, hear our prayer. For those who suffer, for the sick, for the lonely, for the hungry, for victims of political oppression, that mercy and compassion may transform their sorrow into joy. O oh, gracious God, hear our prayer. For the unemployed and for those demeaned or victimized by their work, that they may find new opportunities for joy and satisfaction. O oh, gracious God, hear our prayer. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, pray for the United Church of North India. In the World Council of Churches cycle of prayer, pray for the people of Brazil. In the Kansas cycle of prayer, pray for St. Paul's Maryville. O oh, gracious God, Hear our prayer for those serving in the armed forces, Devin Allen, Murphy Bright, Ben Dibel, Coy Goodman, Michael Green, Harvey Hazelton, Drew Honeycutt, Benjamin Karpinski, Patrick McInerney, Alex Shaw, Jose Teo, Brian Weichel, Colin Kelly, Macaulay Garten, Frank Bedner, and Grant Bedner. O oh, gracious God, hear our prayer. For the homebound, or Joanne Sherman. O oh, gracious God, hear our prayer. For the departed, Debbie Eubanks. O oh, gracious God, hear our prayer. For health and strength, Milalani Hazelton, Courtney Canova, Sharon Sinelli, Curtis Smith. Dixie Moss, Sandy Blasick, James Johan, Maxine Leapst, Elizabeth Appleyard, Frankie Woodman, Adam Greest, Barbie Steelman, 
Roger Aton, Craig and Jeanette Burris, Anthony Straker, Jack Harris, Spike Spiker, the Jaquish family, the Hoffman family, Florence Kirkland, Michael Siragusa, Jean McDowell, Maxine Haverfield, Ken Hogue, Matt Honeycutt, Joanne Devinney, Geraldine, Richard Mann, Don Hoffman, Patricia Miller, Ginger Waters, Maxine Jones, Kevin Eubanks, and Caitlin and Kaylin and Dominique Eubanks, and the Navajo Nation. O oh, gracious God, hear our prayer. For anniversaries, Richard and Pat Levine on their 50th wedding anniversary. O oh, gracious God, hear our prayer. For birthdays, Thomas Hazelton III, Pamela S. Goodman, Stephen Mann. O oh, gracious God, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially those whose witness has strengthened and encouraged us along the way, O oh, gracious God, hear our prayer. God of steadfast love and mercy, hear our prayers and receive the secret yearnings of our hearts. Grant our petitions in ways that are best for us and for those for whom we pray, and deepen within us an awareness of your mercy and a willingness to follow Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Well, we love to celebrate our birthdays and anniversaries, and we have a few this Sunday, so we would love to uh, celebrate with you. Our birthday folk are Tom and Pamela and Stephen. So we'd love to pray for you now. So we're going to pray our birthday prayer together. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may your peace, which passes all understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we have a very special anniversary. The Levines, Richard and Pat, are celebrating 50 years of marriage. That's an absolute incredible achievement, and we're so proud of you both. And we just pray that God will enrich your love for each other and your marriage and uh, your lives. And we just thank you so much for that uh, testament of marriage and uh, the way that you have been together for so long. It's a beautiful thing. So we're going to pray for you now. O oh, gracious and ever living God, Look mercifully upon this couple who come to you seeking your blessing on this uh, anniversary. Continue assisting them with your grace that with true fidelity and steadfast love they may honor and keep the promises and vows they have made. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Now, we don't usually have the peace in morning prayer, but I've brought it in to give us some togetherness in our distance. So I'd love to share the peace with you now, so as we can share the peace together as St. Luke's Church. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. And walk in love as Christ loved us, and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. And to 
Together we join in the words of the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up our souls to your service and by walking before you, in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Together we pray the prayer of Saint Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord, to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions, as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Our closing hymn is Abba Father.
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We have a number of announcements to share with you this morning. First of all, we have our coffee hour after the service. We're going to be looking at our survey to see what the results were, and it's going to be a great time to get together to hear what was suggested and uh, people's feelings about returning. So we're looking at that, and that will be a great uh, use of our time. We're looking forward to you coming. Please do click on the link and be part of that event. That's at 11 o'clock after this service. Then we have our noon refresher, which is at 12.30 on Wednesday, and Karen does a beautiful job leading that, and we pray for each other and for our families and friends and bring up things that need our prayer at this time. It's a wonderful time of fellowship, so please do come to that as well. On Wednesday evening, we will be discussing another film, which will be announced, and uh, we're looking forward to doing that, and uh, we'll uh, be doing that at 8 o'clock on Wednesday. Please again uh, go to the link and click on that and be part of that evening. On Friday we have our fellowship hour then as well and I think we're digging in the dirt again and uh, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I'm doing gardening at the moment and it's uh, really hard work and I need all the tips I can get so I'm looking forward to Friday evening. Again please do join us and be part of that. And then if you would be as kind as to pray for Pat and also for Rich, where uh, they have lost a family member and it's a very difficult time for them. And our, fa- our prayers go out to Debbie and her family at this time. I pray that you would have them in your thoughts and uh, our prayers and our thoughts are with them all the time. Uh, please cover them with your love and prayer at this time. Thank you for being with us. God bless, have a lovely week, and our blessings go with you all.